All right, well, let's go now uh, to Weatherford, Texas, and we'll talk with Shannon. Hey, Shannon. Hey. Hi. Big fan. (laughs) What you got for us tonight? Okay, so I got baptized in the Holy Spirit yesterday in church, and um, but when you get baptized in the water, that's also in the Holy Spirit, correct? Okay, have you been baptized in water? Yes. And then what happened yesterday? Oh, <laughs> well, the Holy Spirit, it felt like it got, like, charged, like, to a thousand percent, like, boom, my eyes are opened. <laughs> And I had the gift of discernment of spirits, I believe. So when I came home, I felt like I couldn't breathe. Uh huh. And how do you feel now? Uh, well, um, I had someone come with me and pray over the house. Someone's coming over with, from the church with anointed oil. Uh huh. I was wondering if that what happens when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and people like put their hands on you and pray and like. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit. Okay. And then I- all right. All right, Shannon. Well, I want to try to help you there. So basically, you had been baptized in water at some point, and then yesterday uh, you experienced something that they, you know, basically termed being baptized in the Spirit. Uh, then you came home, and uh, I guess within 24 hours, you had people over at your house. They were praying over the house, and uh, then they were giving you some oil and maybe pouring that on your forehead or something, and all of this has uh, just been a whirlwind in the last 24 hours. Uh, you know, you talked about how it was times a thousand, and you had discernment and discerning of spirits and all that. Uh, what I would say to that is we got to go back to what the gospel is. I, I don't know the folks that you're hanging out with and what their terminology is and what their you know belief system is, but let's go back to the very core of the gospel. So the gospel is that we believe Jesus is Lord, and we believe that he died for our sins, and that he rose from the dead. And when we call upon him to be saved, then we are taken out of Adam, and we are put in Christ. So that's why the Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. So what is it that makes you a new creature? You hear the gospel, you believe the gospel, and you become a new creation. Now, what does the New Testament say about a new creation? It says that you, Shannon, upon believing in Jesus, upon putting your faith in Jesus, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians says you were sealed with the Holy Spirit when you believed. So you've already believed. I don't know the date and the time, but I'm imagining it was one year or five years or 10 years or 15 years ago, at some point you heard the gospel and believed it. Well, at that time, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit until Jesus returns. So that's a permanent sealing uh, that Ephesians talks about. Now, secondly, the New Testament tells us that we have everything we need for life and godliness. So that means the moment you believed, you had everything you needed. You didn't need a second blessing or a second part or a second portion of the Holy Spirit. When you were born again, you were made complete. Colossians 2 says all the deity, all the fullness of the deity dwells in Jesus, and in him you've been made complete. All right, so putting the pieces together then, Whenever you believed, I want you to think back to when that was. If it was 10 years ago or 8 years ago or 15, whenever you first believed in Jesus and invited him to live in you, then you were born again, you became a new creation, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, you were blessed with every spiritual blessing, and you were made complete in Christ. Now, what you heard yesterday in church is the opposite of that. Uh, what you heard is that you maybe needed another experience. So come forward, and when you come forward, we're going to give you another experience. Now, did you notice that as soon as you had that experience, I mean, they were over at your house within hours, and then they were trying to get the house to have an experience. They were praying over the house. Next thing you know, they're trying to 
you know, purify your body or something or get you more blessing with oil. Well, this isn't going to stop. Let me just tell you, uh, their belief system and the way they're pursuing you on this is not going to stop. And what you really need to know is that you were fine to begin with. You didn't need an extra portion or an extra blessing or an extra gift or an extra dose of anything. You were already in Christ, a believer, and if you're a believer, then you're complete and you're blessed with every blessing and you have everything you need for life and godliness. So what happened yesterday in church? Well, I, I'm not even going to try to explain, you know, what feelings you felt and what highs you had, but here's the problem, and you can quote me on this. You felt something amazing. You said it was like times a thousand, and you, I think you called it a buzz. Well, here's what's going to happen. Today's Monday. Now, how are you going to live Tuesday and then Wednesday and then Thursday? Where's the buzz? Well, Wednesday night, they might have a service, and they might offer you the buzz. But what's going to happen again is that Thursday rolls around, and then Friday, and then Saturday. And then you'd have to wait till Sunday again for the next buzz. So when we're chasing a buzz, what, it, what happens is it becomes like a drug. I'm just going to be candid with you and try to save you the trip, uh, because been there, done that, let me tell you. So what we need to do is recognize that we're complete in Christ. We have everything we need. We don't need somebody to give us more of the Spirit. We don't need anybody to give us more of Jesus. We're sealed with him forever. So that's a God that loves you. Now, a God that you're trying to constantly get more of, see, that's a carrot on a stick. That is a bait, bait on a hook. And, you know, you watch because not only are they coming to your house and then, you know, there's the oil, but soon is coming the money. They're going to want the money. And I'm just being candid with you because I want to save you the trip. So if you've got discernment, which you did mention discernment, then I would just say ask God for wisdom in this situation. And if, if God really loves you, and he's really made you complete, and he's really sealed you until his return. And if he says Jesus' exact words are that you'll never have to hunger or thirst for me because you'll be filled. So they're saying you need to hunger for more and thirst for more. And then next week, hunger for more and thirst for more. And what's happening is they become experienced chasers. And what you want to do is you want to say, no, I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus and I'm going to believe that I'm complete in him and I'm not going to try to get more of the Holy Spirit because I have everything I need in him. He gave it to me at salvation. So what's really happening is that you're a child of God who is learning and growing in who you already are, and you're learning and growing in the Holy Spirit whom you already have, and you can't get any more of him. So, Shannon, I want to put you back on and see. Does that help give you another perspective? Uh, oh, yes. I was just like, wow, okay, so that, you know, I did, when I got saved, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I did think that. I mean, yes. It was a poetry, yes, and I was like going thinking back, I'm like, you know, I, I did get to say that that was true. Yes. So these yes. people are, yeah, and that makes so much sense. And uh-huh. what first was you will hunger and thirst no more? I want to yes. uh, recap on that song. How's that? What, yeah. what verse is that? Okay, in? yeah, yeah. Well, you'll no longer hunger or thirst, and uh, that's Jesus. And uh, of course, he, it's in the Gospels. You'll find it right here in, let's see, John 6. I am the bread of life, uh, verse 35, John 6, 35, whoever comes to me will not hunger and never thirst. So uh, I hope, okay. yes, well, I'm glad that you see the difference there. Now you've got a choice to make. You know, uh, if, if one body of believers is telling you you need more and you need to beg and plead and hope and wait for more and you need to get a new portion every time, and a new blessing, and a new buzz, and a new feeling, and a new gift, and all that, 
uh, I would find some other place with better teaching. I'm just being honest with you. I want to save you the trip. <laughs> so uh, find a group of believers that are really focused on what Jesus already did. Uh, he said, Jesus said, it is finished. So the finished work of Christ uh, is really important. So uh, maybe look elsewhere where they're not chasing an experience, but instead they're celebrating what Jesus has already done. It may not look as theatrical. It may not look as energized in the room. But if we're studying the Bible and we're looking at the Word of God and we're letting God's Spirit who lives in us teach us truth, then that's what matters the most is truth. We don't want a drug. We don't want a buzz. We don't want an experience. We want a relationship with Jesus Christ, and we want to learn his love and grace. So, Shannon, I hope that helps. Uh, reach out to us again anytime, my friend. Great to hear from you.